first of all, Rochester is a uh, absolutely fantastic program, very well coached. Brian does a wonderful job with those kids. They play hard, as you saw. And they do all the little things right. They're athletic, they shoot it. Um, defensively, they're solid. I mean, they're as good as it gets in NJ basketball at the Division Three level. If you look back, they've probably been to the national tournament four out of the last eight years, I'm guessing. But they're there a ton, and there's a reason they're there, because they play so hard, and they've got good athletes, and they play um, well together. You know, so first of all, um, they're a fantastic team. Um, going beyond that, um, it was really exciting for our kids because it was kind of a measuring stick for us to see where we are at. Um, we've done some pretty good things this year, and when we share the ball, we can be good. When we settle, we're not so good, like just like most teams. And so I think the nice thing about that game was we knew what was coming, and um, we kind of withstood their runs, and it's a good game. It's a great game right down to the final 1.1 second. And um, you know what, every time they made a run, we made a run. And every time they had an answer, it seemed like we had an answer. And collectively, um, it was a great game. And our kids played really well together. You guys came in, I think, averaging 80-some points a game. I think they were probably about the same, yet the score was 69-67. So talk about the defense on really both ends of the floor. There was times, especially like early on in the first half, where I mean, you guys were up 16 to 6, I think it was, and then all of a sudden they're up 17 to 16, and then you guys kind of battled back and, and tied it right before halftime. Talk about not offensively, but defensive sides of the ball. Both teams really playing very aggressive. Well, I think you got two teams digging in on every possession, trying to limit opportunities for them, trying to contest, give no open shots, and there wasn't a lot of open shots. I mean, we went on a little run early. And they're too good a team not to expect that they're going to go on a run. So it's 16 to 5. You know they're going on a run because they're well coached and they're a great team. And they did. And then from there, you know, it, it's, it goes back and forth. Basketball's a game of runs. Um, you go on them and then you have to kind of absorb them. And, um, you know, it's, it's tied at halftime. And then, you know, it's who wins the second half. So I think two teams really battling defensively, trying to work and help each other and uh, really limit open opportunities. And I think for a real good portion of that game, shots were tough. There wasn't a lot of open shots. It was hard for both teams to finish at times. And um, I think it was just two teams really battling and really getting after it. You look at the stat sheet, we were talking right before I started rolling this tape. You look at the stat sheet, Tanner Sheevy, his name just off the stat sheet isn't going to jump out, but he played a tremendous game tonight, was at the free throw line a couple times late to kind of seal that deal for you guys. But just talk about his efforts as a sophomore player, and while the numbers might not jump out off the paper at you, what he meant in this victory. Well, I think, you know, to be successful at the upper levels of NJ basketball, you have to have sophomores. You have to have kids that have kind of been through it. They understand it. Um, and, you know, I think Tanner, I told him after the game, that was your best game in two years. It seemed like in the second half, every time we needed somebody to make a play, he was somewhere in the area. It was either him making it or him, you know, being somewhere near and helping to make it. You know, so... I thought he did some great things. And yeah, if you look at the stat sheet, there's nothing there that's really going to just leap out at you. But when we needed to make plays, he typically was around. He knocked down some free throws. He attacked the basket and got in the paint and got to the free throw line. Um, he jump stopped extremely well. I mean, so um, his best game. I think another guy who, who at least kind of stood out to me in, in spurts and in, in spots tonight was Brian Bearden. Uh, got more minutes than the last time, last home game. Uh, Big smile on his face late when he was Ding up uh, their, their leading mm -hmm. scorer in Galloway. He just seemed to, to, to kind of really be on, really focused tonight. What did you see from, from Beard in, in, in tonight's win? Well, I think Brian, when he's got all the tools, and when he dials in and he doesn't gamble and he follows his assignment, um, he can be really, really good. And you saw him make some plays. You saw him gamble a couple of times. But, you know, when he's dialed in and he plays the way we want him to play, he plays hard, um, he went up and got a couple rebounds that I don't know that we have too many other guys that are going to go up and get that board. You know, so Brian made some plays. And I've told him, as you learn to play harder, your minutes will go up. 
And if you don't play hard, well, then they're not going to go up. And so the reality is he's a great kid. He's got a great smile. Um, and he's got some tools to be really good. And, you know, I, I thought he took a step forward today. And now our challenge for him is in our next game and our next practice, take another step, take another step, and let's see where we can take this thing. Finally, I asked Tanner the same thing. Uh, how do you take a win like this? You celebrate it. You're, you're obviously excited about it, but how do you keep it in perspective uh, in the course of the whole season and the fact that there's still a lot of it left? You don't want to think, well, we reached the, the pinnacle, you know, because you're six games into this year. Right. Well, part of our job as a coaching staff is to let them celebrate tonight and enjoy. And then you know what? At 6.30 tomorrow morning, we get back to practice. And... Tonight's game, while it's great, is over. And now we have to prepare for our Saturday opponent, you know, and Thanksgiving in the middle there. And so I want them to practice, enjoy their families for a, a day and a half. We'll get back to the practice floor on Friday again, and then we got a game on Saturday. So um, we're, we're not going to make more of it than it is. Um, you're right, we're six or seven games into the season. Was it a great win? Absolutely. Should we enjoy it? Yes. And... It's one game in a long schedule. So we get back to work tomorrow morning.